Cindy out of here with my artsy endeavors. How are we doing today? I am actually doing quite well. Um, we are going to play in my creative year, my my creative year journal. Um, I actually I just saw these. Um, oh wow! Let me tell you, by moving, you find so much stuff. <laughs> I'm finding stuff I forgot I had. So anyways, um, I decided I'm going to do a little bit of, just put some of these stickers on here. But I want to use glue, so. Uh, maybe. Alright, so what are we going to talk about today? Uh, with my creative year, this of course is the month of March. And we're going to talk about a few things this month. Um, just a heads up for anybody else that uh, it's your first time watching. I am doing my creative year with a focus on chronic pain. Um, there's a lot of people out there that suffer with chronic pain, and I just I like to put my little spin on it and you know tell you what I'm thinking. And the reason I do that is because when I started um, work in the chronic pain, I'm gonna bring you out just a little bit. Go oh, wrong way. Uh, when I ended up with the chronic pain and started trying to live. Um, Nobody told me some of this stuff, and I really wish I would have had somebody that I could have listened to and say, oh, okay, that makes sense. Ah, oh, I understand that now. So I've decided to take this year for my creative year, and I'm going to take our topics and our prompts, and I'm going to work on them um, with chronic pain as the focus. So I hope you guys enjoy this series. Uh, I'm really, you know, I'm looking forward to doing this. I think I'll be able to, you know, maybe put some minds at ease. And, and, and if anything, maybe you learn something about a spouse that lives in chronic pain along the way. Or, you know, maybe you have a best friend that has a lot of chronic pain. Um, this is just a great way for you to learn more about what they're going through and what you can do to help them. All right. So, for the month of March, I just think these are so cool, these little stars. I thought they were, oh, they're all silver. I want some of the teal ones. Yay. Okay. Um, all right, so our topic this month is old and new. And the first uh, prompt for this week is um, rework. Now, you can take that any way you want it. You can take a piece of art and you can rework it from an old to a new. You can um, take an old book, maybe, um, and turn it from uh, just a book that was going to be thrown out to a junk journal. I mean, there's so many different things. You can take a background that you made and you're like, eh, I don't really like that. You know, paint over it. Uh, tear it up in little pieces. Use it in, in a new piece of art. Any of that kind of stuff could be old and new. Now, what I'm going to work on is chronic pain. What happens with the old person? And how do you get to be the new person? I don't think there's much left in this. I can't get any glue out. Sorry, guys. I just have two more stars I need to put down. All right, we're going to have to do something with that glue. So I'm going to talk about, I just need two more of these stars. I'm going to talk about, um, you know, what happened. What, what happened to the old new, the old me, and the new me. And Because they are different. They're totally different um, in some ways and totally the same in others. So I'll clarify that in a minute. Let me just get these off my hands. Yeah, I found these in uh, my stuff, and I thought those are really cool. They would go good on my cover. So I'm just going to put those aside for right now and watch later on. I'll go to pick them up. What did I do with the two I had? There they are. <laughs> All right. So let me get my stars put on here, and then we're going to find some pages, and we're going to go to town. All right, so my stars are on. And I'm going to need this glue, so I'm going to keep it right here upside down. All right, so this is my creative year. Um, I didn't show you guys this, but just recently, I gotta bring it out a little bit more. I got a lot of junk on my desk still, so I'm kind of having a hard time getting stuff on here, but that's all right. Um, 
I, sh I didn't show you guys this, but I just took a piece of scrapbook paper and I just made a little pocket. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to put my months in there. I know I had talked to you about this before and I wanted to add the months to the, um, the little folders. So that was January. Here's February. And we are, I did a lot of work in February in this. And now we're into March, all right? So here's our March folder. This is um, My Giant Life. If you're interested in seeing how that's done, check out the My Giant Life video. This page is one that I had just decided one night I was going to play with. I think I have a video. I'll double check that. Um, and then this is the back side. So now this is what I decided to do with this um, this this month's prompt. Boy, I can't think today. Ha. Huh hence part of chronic pain and part of fibromyalgia. Um, I decided I'm going to do, instead of doing like a front and a back, I'm going to do a face-to-face, -face, and then I'll play on the fronts and the backs of these. So let me get this out of the way. Let's do that. We shall move to my Creative Year journal. All right, so I've got these two pages, and like I said, I'm going to do these um, together. They already have a clear coat of gesso on them, and that is um, so that whatever medium I decide to put on them sticks. And actually, I've been playing around a lot with uh, the Dina Wakely paints recently. So let me, let's see, what do we want to do? Oh, this one's still open. Um, this has got to go elsewhere. Let's see. I want to play. So let's play. Let's take a little bit of this magenta. Oh, I have one here too. All right. So let's take a little bit of magenta and just going to put some spots. And like I said, the first thing I'm going to do is just play. We're going to play, get a background down here, just, just play around. And what we're going to talk about is the old and the new. All right, any of you guys that have watched my channel long enough knows what happened. Um, I had an accident at work, and um, it messed up my back really bad. So um, I've had two surgeries on my back, and the first one, when I when this my back was first messed up, um, it did it did work. Uh, the surgery did. I ended up um, having a disectomy and a laminectomy, and basically what that is is they removed some disc and got it away from the nerves. And then um, the second time, the second time that I actually got hurt at work, which was um, I lifted a 60-pound router, and the minute I did it, I, I, I there's nothing I could do. I already knew. I was like, oh no, and it just snapped popped and I am in the same amount of pain today that I was the day that it happened. Hence what they call chronic pain, right? So that was the accident. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Um, that was the accident. That's what happened. That's how come I am the way I am right now. Um, I did have another surgery. It did not take. It did not take care of the problem. Um, I've talked to two different orthopedic surgeons. I have permanent damage. Um, at this point, there's nothing they can do to help me. Um, I have permanent nerve damage as well uh, because it took a long time for my surgery to be approved. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm in pain. I live with it. I live with it 24-7. It does not ease up. Um, if anything, it just gets worse. And it gets worse when I do things I shouldn't be doing. Like sitting for an hour or walking. Um, if I try to walk in the grocery store, it kills me. Um, it's just massive, massive pain. So this, this paint is really, really thick. I think it's this is one of the older tubes that I have and I think that's why it's so thick so anyways I'm just right now I'm just playing getting some color on these pages I don't want to I just don't want to work with an icky brown page 
All right, so let me dry these up real quick, and then we're gonna come in with some white and play around, and then we're gonna start talking about the things that I know are different from the old me and the new me. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, so the first page I'm gonna work on, and this is gonna be a pretty simple um, layout, just because um, I wanna keep it that way. So this is a fine liner um, with the yellow tag. I don't know the size. I'm not positive. It's got a nice tip on it. And all I have in this is white gesso. And I don't do anything to the gesso. Of course, now here it's not going to work for me. I normally don't have any problems with these. Um, but it's been a while since I've used it. So let's see what we need to do. We're going to put the pin back in. Might be something on the inside, which it is. Ay, ay, ay. Normally I don't have problems with these, but like I said, you know, between moving and um, not having access to all of my supplies at the same time, um, I think part of the problem is they got dry. So I didn't get to use, I didn't get to use my supplies. This is just a little poker tool. And what we're going to do, see if that worked. And if not, we're going to find another one. <laughs> so let's see. Now it's not going to let me take that one without the yellow one. There we go. All right, so let's try it again. Does it work? No. All right. Hold on. I'll be back. Okay, so I still have not gotten my gesso one to work. I've been trying messing with it and I haven't. But I do have another one. This one's the blue um, seal. And this one is titanium white paint. Uh, and this one works fine. So what we're going to do is we're just going to play around with these. Do -do 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 -do. All right, well, while I'm playing, I'm supposed to be talking. Um, the old me. I, I have this little um, box of words that are really, really old. Um, I, I actually bought these, I believe, off eBay um, several years ago. It's got to be over five years ago now. And what they are is I think they were originally scrapbook um, words. And they have words on either sides of them. Can you hear the motorcycles? funny um, they were going down through there crazy um, they have words on either side of them and I just went through my box and I just picked out um, some of the words that I felt kind of described where I who I was then and who I am now so here comes more bikes wow okay this is called a, I this one is a blast from the past so I thought that was a really good um, you know, way to describe me because really, you know, it is my past. Uh, back then I was confident, okay? Um, just plain overall self-confidence, right? Um, I felt that what I was doing in the world was, you know, I don't want, the word I put picked out is desirable, but let's put it this way. That's how I felt, you know, with my hubby, with my job, what I was doing, I felt, um, another word I couldn't find, but which is worthy. I felt that the things I do or did um, were definitely, you know, worth it. They were things you should be doing. And, you know, I mean, I would, I was always on the go. Always. I was more on the road than I was at home. All right. So with that being said, I was agile. I was very agile is what they say. Um... I would call up my girlfriend, hey girl, you know, I'm getting done work tonight at five. Do you want to meet at so-and-so and have dinner and then we'll go so-and-so? Absolutely. You know, so it was, I was, I had a much more active world um, than I do now. I was more spontaneous. I was willing to do anything and everything. 
I, I just, you know, I had the zest for life and life was good and I really enjoyed, you know, my life I, and I enjoyed um, where I was going and what I was doing and just the whole, the whole mess of it. It was just fabulous, right? Dreaming. I was always dreaming about, oh, you know, I could go on this vacation, we can go here, we can go there, blah, 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 blah. It was always something, ooh, let's just do this then. Oh, my magenta just wanted to pop out by the looks of things. All right, not sure I like that, but we're going to keep it up. Just do a few of them. So anyways, um, like I said, life was good. You know, I had a full-time job. I was making good money. I was, you know, doing what I was supposed to be doing in, in society. I was living the life, right? Um, and, you know, I felt that what I was doing was worthy in the way that, you know, people are going to remember, oh, yeah, I remember Cindy. She used to do the audits, blah, 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 all right? So... I picked out the, the words remember me because that's how I felt. I felt that, you know, hey, I'm working enough stuff. I'm doing good. People are actually going to remember me and remember who I am and, and, you know, what I've been able to give to the cause. All right. I'm going to set this aside for a second because I want to play with these. Um, and this has to dry. So now I just recently got... Oh, Ta-da! Dina Wakely's new scribble sticks. I like these. Um, I like these and my Neo colors. I just, I really do. But anyways, so, you know, here I am. I'm, I'm doing good. Um, living life, no issues, work too much, um, enjoyed my job to an extent. Um, I did enjoy my job. Where's my... So, it was a good life. And then that accident happened. And let me tell you, it completely, completely changed my life. What I'm going to do, I love this. Love this cheddar color. Thank you, Dina Wakely. I love these. And I'm just going to do them all cheddar because I like the color so much. Isn't that great? Look how beautiful that is. This is what it looks like when it goes on. And the pigment is just amazing. Desirable. I don't know about desirable, but, you know, hey, it was all good. I would, you know, get my granddaughter on the weekend. I'd get her Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we'd have all kinds of fun. And we'd go places and do things. And I took her up to Syracuse. There was a carousel um, in what used to be the old carousel mall. It's now called Destiny USA. But, um, you know, we'd go up and we'd go out to lunch and we'd go shopping and she'd ride on the carousel. And I mean, it was just, we had fun. We, we really enjoyed, um, we, I say we, I had a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm sure she did too. But, um, you know, it was just a different lifestyle. It was a normal, what I call quote unquote, normal lifestyle, right? And then the accident happens. And let me tell you, um, very, very difficult to begin with. And um, it, it, it took a lot. It took a lot to get where I am today. So I'm going to dry these up real quick. I'm going to dry that page up real quick. And I will be right back. All right, so anyways, here I am sitting here jabbering away, messed around with my flowers a little bit more, and I look up, and the camera's not on. So, sorry about that, guys. I was just playing around with these flowers a little bit more. I don't really like the way they turned out. So, but you know what? It's all good. So now I just want to do, this is a really, really thick tip. In other words, it, it puts quite a bit out. Um, let me see. I'm going to do a different color. Let's do a different color. I wonder if my yellow is a thin. Let's check my yellow. My yellow is a even thicker one, so we're not going to use that. Let's try. Let's try my gold. Fine gold. Ugh. Again, this one's a thicker one too because it's got 
the weight on it. But you know what? We're going to use it anyways. So, like I said, we're talking about... Come on. Another fine liner of mine not working. This is what happens when you have to put your... your I almost said crap. But when you have to put your R supplies in um, boxes and then it takes a while to get them out. You end up doing this kind of stuff. It's thinking about it. There we go. Maybe. Yay! Come on. Ugh. Wow, it's like there's a big thick. There we go. There we go. All right. So um, I'm also waiting for a delivery. I just called and ordered my dinner. My hubby is not here today. He went to New York to get more goodies from the house. So, and of course, you know, the first thing that had to come was my art supplies. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? <laughs> hey, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, so we back to what we were talking about. Um, you know, we're talking about um, then and now. So I've got these words here, the ones that I put the cheddar paint on. I'm going to set this aside to dry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these all down on this little piece of paper and then cut them out. So, um, because I want them to have some kind of a little background. I don't want them all to just sit on the page. So yeah, when you um, end up with a, a quick change of life, as I did, um, it's like somebody takes the carpet and just pulls it off from under your feet. And it's mind-blowing as well as it's um, scary. It's stressful. It's um, depressing. It's all of those things all rolled up into one. And let me tell you, it's not... I'm going to move that up a little bit it's not easy so if you ever hear somebody say oh yeah I had a life-altering accident oh it's fine no problem yeah no that's not true all right um, all right so for now I'm gonna set these aside with this I'm gonna let these dry and then we're gonna cut them up and put them on that page but we're gonna come back and work some more on this page now, I did the white on those. I really want to do the white again here. So maybe second time's a charm. We'll see. It takes a lot. See, it takes a lot to learn. I watched Mary Abrams do it, and she makes it look so easy. She's just like, do, 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 and goes to town with her fine liners. Well, let me tell you, it's a science. <laughs> right? All right, so while I'm doing this, um, let's see, where is my where is my main word that I wanted to do? Um, doo -doo -doo, hold on, keeping my eye out for my dinner. Okay, so this right here. This is where it ends up. Yes, it is a blessing in disguise. Now, when I first got her and, um, you know, went in, they did, the, it took, it actually took 14 months for the workers' comp insurance company um, to approve my surgery. So by the time the surgery was approved, um, I already had the permanent damage. It was 14 months later. I will be right back. All right, so I did finish doodling the flowers. I'm going to set that over there. And we're going to get these, um, these words put down. All right, so I'm just going to use these little scissors here to cut them out. So we talked about these. We talked about these words. Now, um, for the new who I am now, um, that is going to be different because, like I said, it has taken me, oh gosh, this is the sixth year that I'm dealing with chronic pain. Um, so it's taken me, I'd say, a good four and a half to five years 
in order to change, no, not to change, to accept um, where I am on this journey of chronic pain, who I am with this journey of chronic pain, and how to live with the journey of chronic pain, okay? It definitely was not easy. It was not easy to try to figure out. It was not easy to learn how to live like this. It, it, there was nothing easy about it. Um, you know, I went from having a full lifestyle. I mean, like I said, I was on the road more than I was home. Um, a lot of that was due to work, but still, I just, I was never home. I was always on the go. And when I was home, I was always on the go. Um, you know, there was no such thing as just hanging out on a Saturday. I made plans because I had things to do, places to go, people to see, and people to hang out with while I was not working. So, you know, it was just a very, very busy life. And when you go from that to one of just, uh, what's the word, sedentary, to a sedentary state, to, so basically I went from being gone 24-7 to being home 24-7, all right? And you have to deal with the pain on top of that. Um, it's a difficult journey. It is a very difficult journey. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these down. Hopefully I got more ugh, glue now. All right, so the first one says, remember me. Whoops. And I'll tell you, it takes a while to you know, figure out who you are. And, you know, this also works um, another way. My employer um, basically, um, I would say, actually, I'm going to move this. I would say, actually, it was almost like I was never there. They don't care. They, they could care less. Um, they had to pay out workers' comp insurance. They weren't happy about that. So, you know, it's a blast from the past. Do they remember me? Probably not. I still talk to only one, no, two people that I used to work with. And, I mean, I worked with hundreds of people. But, yeah, they don't care. All right, so this is my old. This is my old blast from the past, right? I'm going to let these dry. Let's go back to this. Hopefully these are dry almost close enough um, and these words now I'm gonna tell you what I've picked out and I'll tell you why so the first thing I did says yes it's a blessing in disguise right that is something you learn do you all of a sudden wake up and say oh this is a blessing in disguise I've got chronic pain and I can live like this no that is my very bottom the first thing you need to do is realize that this is the world, you have to look at the world in a new light. So you have to um, think about your old life, think about your new life, and think about how you can live in your new life. Um, with the restrictions and the pain and the everything you're having to deal with it, it's not easy okay so you really have to sit down and take a look at your world your new normal in a new light at first when i looked at me i was embarrassed well at first i was in denial and and then i was embarrassed about me about oh, i have to use a cane Oh my God, what do you mean I can't walk? What do you mean I can't walk the mall? You know, I, no, no, I can't, I, I have to be able to do this. This is so embarrassing. You want me to have a handicap sticker? Are you crazy? You know, it, it's that. All of those thoughts and feelings and that's what it's about. It's, it's, it's works in there with that denial, works in there with the grief. I've talked about that before. The grief of losing the job, the grief of, Losing your mobility, losing your normal. Okay, that's a grief that you have to go through. And it takes time, lots and lots of time. And it's not like you sit down one day and say, aha, okay, I'm over it. I get it. No, it doesn't work that way. It comes in, in um, waves of grief, okay? 
and denial. So that's that one. All right, fulfillment and moment. Whoops, back up. You have to learn to crawl before you can walk. And this is huge in chronic pain because one of the things that people do that are in chronic pain is we like to deny it and we say, oh no, we can do that. I can do that. That's not a problem. I can do that just like I did it before. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Okay. So we have to learn how to crawl. In other words, how to live with, how to um, accept where we're at. All right. And that's not easy. This is the new, like I said, this is the new me. So I got beyond this, you know, denial, embarrassing, learning to crawl and walk. And what did it do to me? Um, it gave me, once I figured out how to live with this stuff, it gave me a fulfillment of my life that I've never had before. Now, when I say a fulfillment, you know, it's, I am comfortable. I am more comfortable now with the chronic pain than I was without it. Doesn't that sound weird? It feels kind of weird too. So it gave me a fulfillment. Um, I now look at moments instead of things in a way that, um, you know, I just enjoy every minute. There's no rush because I have to get to work. There's no, you know, um, oh my God, I've only got this day to do it. Now I enjoy the moments. If I want to stop for a minute and look out the window, I stop for a minute and look out the window, right? It's about the moments. Um, this one, it, it, it took a while, but you know what? I think this is my destiny. I really do. I think it's my destiny to um, be able to help other peoples, other peoples, <laughs> so much for my English. Um, I think it's my destiny to help other people deal with chronic pain and learn how to live with chronic pain. That's my destiny. It's what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm doing it. Um, hideaway. I don't have to hide away anymore. I can still go and see people and say hi and live my life. I don't have to hide away. And that's what I did the first two years. Okay. One of the biggest things that's done for me is mellowed me. I am actually so much more calmer now than I ever have been. I don't let, this one's a little bit too big. I don't let the little things bug me as much as I used to. I used to have a quick trigger and not as much anymore. Although the bank here in Loris upset me the other day, but long time. It's been a long time since I've been that mad. But anyways, um, so it's mellowed me. I've learned to listen and to understand my body. Um, your body doesn't lie to you your body's going to tell you, hey, you need to back down and you need to listen to it. Um, this, These two words are kind of together, but um, I've got degree and I've got absolutely. I, the, I had to learn and I had to listen and I had to understand, I'm going to have to get a new glue out, the degree of my disability. Okay, and that's good. This is the new me. All right, I needed to understand the connection that um, the physical things that I do, I had to understand, learn how to understand that connection between that and the pain. All right, and so that's another, you know, new thing for me that I've learned, and it's it's good. All right. Um, Unconditional. I have learned that people love me unconditionally. The friends that are my true friends, the people that are by my side, it's not, it's not about, um, it's not about what I can do, it's about who I am. 
and that is such a huge lesson to learn and you know it's really a shame that it had to happen via chronic pain but it's just amazing and you find out when you're in this situation who your friends are and who are not you find out who thinks of you and who doesn't right so that's the unconditional now um, I've also found now I I feel very at peace my life is much more peaceful now than it ever used to be um, I find inspiration in everyday things I may just look outside and look at a bumblebee and find inspiration in that my previous prior to my injury no 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 that just wasn't that wasn't there um, I've learned that rest and relaxation is not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Right? I have also learned, let's use this one, that um, hanging around the house isn't bad. There's, there's no worries. Wait, oh, I don't like this on that paper. Um, it's this one. Ah! <laughs> Tumble! Timber! Here comes all my my scissors. Oh, that's funny. Anyways. <laughs> it was okay. Yeah, see, I don't like this. Alright, these are going to have to be straight because I don't like them against that paper. Alright, so let's... What do we do? We're just going to cut them out like this. Alright. So, where was I? Rest and relaxation. Um, and hanging around the house. Like I said, it's not a bad thing. Um, enjoy your home. You know, you work for years to provide yourself with that beautiful home. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. And that's something I've learned to do. <laughs> the first couple years, I went stir crazy. I thought I had to go, 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 go. And you know what? I've learned I don't have to go, go, go. I am very content. I am very happy. I am comfortable, and I don't have to go, go, go. There's no reason to, right? You know, yeah, is it nice to get out of the house? Absolutely. I may stay home for a week, and I'll say to my husband, hey, we need to go somewhere. I don't care where. I don't care if it's just, even though I cringe when I say this, Walmart. Can't stand that place. But anyways, um, you know, I just, I have found that it's just so much easier to be around home and you know find things to do I'm always in my art room if I'm around home I'm 99% of the time in my art room because I enjoy it in here um, and it's good it's all good it doesn't drive me stir crazy it's not like I ever run out of ideas there's one of my hair um, I never run out of ideas of things to do so it's good it's all good so I think what I'm trying to say to you is if you're in a situation where you are having chronic pain or you know somebody that their life has been turned upside down by chronic pain, um, take some time to listen to them and understand what kind of a world they've been handed. Okay? Um, you know... Do I wish I didn't have the chronic pain? Yes. I would love to be able to wake up one morning and say, Oh, I feel great. That doesn't happen. Okay? Um, but does that mean that I have to be miserable and grumpy and all of that? No. Um, does it mean I have to listen to what my body's saying and stop doing stupid things to it? Yes. And you know what? It's all good. It's all good. Life is good. So, the old and the new. Um, am I the same person? No. And I will, my husband and both my friends will actually tell you that. That no, I'm not the same person. Um, but, I'm not... I'm not, oh, what's the word? I'm not letting my chronic pain 
dictate my life. I am listening to my chronic pain when it gets mad at me. And does that dictate a little bit? Yeah, I have to listen to it. And the only reason I have to listen to it is because if I don't, I know I'm going to put myself in more pain, right? All right, so here's all those. Hopefully this is dry. Not yet. Let me dry this up. I'll be right back. All right, so this is pretty well dry. I got a different glue. Maybe I'll actually get glue out of this one. Yay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put these down. And then um, I'm going to do a little bit of doodling on these pages, and then I'll be done. You know, don't don't forget, if you have any questions for me, if you don't understand something, if you um, just, you know, want to pick my brain, however much of it's there, um, you know, just shoot me a shoot me a private message or whatever. Uh, the biggest thing I'll say though is remember, even if you're not the one that suffers with chronic pain and you live with somebody that suffers with chronic pain, this applies to them as well. It doesn't matter if it's a physical pain or even a mental pain. Things like anxiety disorders and depression and all of that. All of that applies. Okay? Um, you know, it's, it, it's no different for anybody else. Anybody else that has to deal with this, uh, they, they go through the same emotions that I do. They go through the grief of maybe losing their freedom, um, whether it be, um, you know, going for a ride or taking a walk across the street. You know, they lose those same things as well. So, you know, don't um, try not to judge just because um, somebody looks good on the outside. That doesn't mean that they may have, you know, um, a, a mental issue, a, a mental, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Cindy can't find her words today. An issue. A disease, a problem. I don't know exactly how you want to call it, but, you know, just don't judge them because just because you can't see the pain doesn't mean the pain's not there. And that's the same with anybody that has a, you know, an, an issue with um, my back. I look fine on the outside. I look totally fine. Okay, but the more I walk, the more it hurts, the more it hurts, the more pain I'm in, the more pain I'm in, the harder it gets. It's all there. It's all there. And, you know, you have to be kind be kind and help anybody you see that's in that position if you can help them please do even if you ask and they say no don't stop asking because there may be a day when they just say I can't do this anymore can you somebody please help me I've been there I know what that means I know what it's like all right, I've got one more fulfillment. Where am I going to put you? Na, 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 na. Right here. All right, so don't give up on them. Don't stop asking them. You know, if it was a person that used to go to the movies with you all the time and, you know, went out to dinner every Friday night, just because they can't make it this Friday night doesn't mean they can't make it next Friday night. So don't stop asking keep them in in your you know in mind just because we hurt doesn't mean that you know we don't like to go out to dinner too I just if somebody asks me to go out to dinner I have to be honest and say you know it really depends on how I'm doing that day um, and a lot of times you have to plan and when I say you meaning the person with the chronic pain and there's days that you know you're all set you're intent to go and by 5 o'clock, your fibromyalgia has decided to flare. Or you did three loads of laundry today, and now your back is not cooperating. So, you know, there's, there's always tomorrow. I want to find a different pen. There's always another day, but just don't forget to, don't stop asking, okay? I'm just going to go blast from the past. 
remember me. I just want to put a little black on here. Maybe I should do it on the outside. Yeah, I'll do it on the outside. So I hope this helps, even if it's just a little and it's like, ah, now I know what, you know, Uncle Joe's going through or I know what, you know, Aunt Betsy is doing. I, I get it. Um, that's my purpose. I, I'm here to help anybody just to understand that because even if it's you and you're living with chronic pain, that doesn't mean your life is older, over. It just means you have to do things differently. And we'll get into that more, I'm sure, as the year goes on. I like that one. So this is the old me. This is a new me. Have you noticed this? Now, three years ago, it would have been this way. This would have been the old me going, oh my God, I don't know, I don't, can't do this, I can't do that, what am I going to do? I, you know, I want to go do this, I want to go do that, and I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, guess what? Yes, you can. You can. You have to put your mind to it. You have to plan things. Um, like I said, sometimes plans don't work. And it's okay. Just, you know, keep your chin up. Maybe tomorrow will be a better day. Um, and just enjoy your life. Yeah, it's painful. Yeah, it hurts. Sometimes, you know, you just feel like beating your head against the wall. That's what I always say when I'm at that point where my pain's ready to take me over. I'm like, I just want to beat my head against the wall and just keep doing it until I don't feel anything. And those are the days when the pain just gets the best of you. And it happens. I'm not sitting here saying, oh, yeah, my life's all rosy. No. It happens. Does it happen as frequently as it used to? No. It used to happen all the time. And I was just, I would have days where I'd lay in bed and just cry. And it's like, I just can't do this anymore. But um, it doesn't stay that way forever. It really does not. You have to have a positive outlook. Um, yes, no, you're going to have those low moments. I don't know anybody, chronic pain or not, that has all perfect days of their life. There's nobody out there like that. Everybody has a bad day. So with chronic pain, maybe you have two or three bad days a week instead of one. <laughs> you know, that's just, that's the way it is and that's the way it works. And like I said, you just have to learn um, to work with that pain and to listen to your body when your body tells you I'm getting tired of this you can't do this anymore don't say oh geez just give me 10 more minutes oh I want to hit in that one more store and I'm I was a good one for that I'd be like oh but I'm out I want to let's go to that one next door and then by the time I got home I was in so much agony was it worth going to that one extra store no all right so there we are. This is my new and old, or old and new, whichever way you want to look at it, my rework, okay? Um, and this basically tells you where I was, what happened, and this is how I'm working my new way of living, my chronic pain way of living, all right? I hope you guys have enjoyed this. As always, um, leave any comments uh, below. Uh, questions, concerns, that sort of thing. I'll definitely answer them to the best of my knowledge. And what I'm going to do, which I normally do anyways, is I'm going to flip these over. And we're just going to do some free play on the backs of these. So I'm not going to be talking in this. I will, um, I will just fast forward through this process. I'm actually, I'm thinking about doing kind of like this. So, And I hope you guys enjoy. I will chat with you at the end.
All right, everybody, so here we go. Um, we did the two back sides. They were free play. This one says, if you're quiet, you must be up to no good. And I'm never quiet, so you can always tell when I'm up to no good. And this one says, let it shine, and I just really like that picture. So on the front, we talked about the prompt for this week. Um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, uh, please leave them in the section below. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, have fun. That's what life's all about. And happy creating. I'll see you next week. Bye.